Hello everyone and welcome to Your Health Truth. I'm your host Brock Hardman. Today we we're uh, going to talk about vitamin E. Now I know the past two days we did vitamin A, vitamin B, and you would think C, D, and E. But I'm going to save um, C and D for the next two days. I want to save the best for last. Um, and I apologize, I know vitamin A, and vitamin B, and probably today's vitamin E are not particularly the most interesting vitamins, but um, the next two will be. So um, apologize if you think they're boring, but uh, they're necessary. So uh, today is vitamin E, and uh, it's basically also called alpha tocopherol, and that's the natural version. Now, most people will go to the health food store and they'll get vitamin E synthetic version. Uh, they don't know that they're getting the synthetic version. And so a lot of times, uh, not only is it not as um, good for you, but it's also you're getting a lot more than you need. So vitamin E is one of those that's uh, it's fat soluble. So uh, vitamins A, D, E, and K are the fat soluble vitamins just so you know, and uh, vitamin E is, is a fat soluble, so it stores in your fat, and so it can accumulate, and it's really one of those tricky vitamins uh, that there's there's been a lot of research done, and there's really no conclusive uh, answer as to how much you should take it. There's a lot of sites and a lot of different, uh, you know, practitioners that will say take, you know, 200 IU. Some will say take 800. Uh, there's even some that will say take uh, 1600. I mean, it's all over the board. Uh, most of the research that I've done has basically, um, most people kind of pretty consistently say, do not go over 400 IU. So that's what I stick with. That seems to be kind of the consensus in, uh, you know, in the natural health community is 400 IU. Because if you take, too, you know, more than that, kind of like vitamin A, it's fat soluble. So if you take too much, it can become toxic. So this is another one of the vitamins that uh, unfortunately can become toxic. And there's still a lot of research that goes on, uh, you know, about this and, you know, what's the proper amount, what, you know, what's it really, really good for. Um, some things that they have actually discovered is it's good for fighting free radicals, so um, damage due to, you know, oxidation and free radicals and stuff like that. Um, but it's also good for your cardiovascular system and uh, has shown some benefits for your skin. So... Uh, it's still something that you definitely need to take, but you just need to be sure not to take too much of, and uh, be sure that you know you get some from food. And if you need to supplement, supplement. But I would advise against taking too much. So uh, you know things like nuts and um, almonds and peanuts. Um, I think one of the highest containing foods is wheat germ, but most people do not eat wheat germ. I can't tell you the last time I've had wheat germ because. I don't think I've ever had wheat germ. So, uh, but I do eat almonds a lot, and those are pretty high. So, uh, a lot of the nuts will have high vitamin E, and the you know unfortunately the the recommended daily allowance or RDA value is extremely low. So I would definitely try to get more than what the RDA says, because uh, it's just you know kind of like for vitamin C, which we're going to talk about uh, tomorrow. Uh, I want to get into that. Basically, you know, the recommendation of vitamin C is uh, 60 milligrams, which is enough to prevent scurvy, and that's what it was based on back in the day. So, uh, you know, it's just the evidence is inconclusive. Most of them are synthetic. So, if you're gonna buy a supplement, I would make sure that it's natural. Uh, make sure it says natural form of vitamin E, uh, which is alpha tocopherol, and that's it. So. Hopefully now you are more educated on vitamin E. Thank you.